Hi there everyone, um, it's Mrs. Schultz here and I'm gonna do a little tutorial on how to use the Explore Learning gizmos um, that we are asking you to try out for science class. Um, some people have had some issues with uh, just how it works and so I thought if I just showed you that might be the easiest way to handle it. So we're gonna start on the um, Lakeview district homepage because that's where we can access the um, the education files. So um, from the top, we're just going to scroll down and it says access remote educational and family resources. I'm going to click there. And then it says click here to access student educational resources. We're going to click there. We're going to go to Jefferson Middle School. And then we're gonna to go to science. Um, these original folders just have some general resources in them, but these, <clears throat> these calendars down here at the bottom are what you really need to be working on now. So um, the second one says JMS Science Week 3 and 4. So we're gonna click on that. And then we're gonna to go to this Activity 2 for seventh grade because it says Explore Learning Gizmo mystery powder analysis. So all of the text on these um, schedules of activities are linked to the activities or the websites. So we're going to click here on the title. It's going to take us to a, uh, a document that has some explanation on how to create your own login the first time that you go um, to this website here for Explore Learning. So um, depending on which class you're in, Mrs. Schultz, Mrs. Zubak, or Mr. Julian, there's a class code that you'll need. And then you create your own uh, username and password for the um, Explore Learning Gizmo website. Um, once you get in, you'll see that there are two gizmos ex uh, assigned to your class. Um, and we're gonna focus on the mystery powders analysis today, but you're also gonna need, as it says, for each gizmo, you'll need a student handout. Now, if you have access to a printer, the easiest thing to do is to print the handout. Um, but um, assuming that some people don't have a printer or at this point the ink has run out and it's just not essential to go get more ink, I'm gonna do the activity um, having the student handout on my screen and I'll just be writing down my answers on a separate sheet of paper like it says in number six. Um, this line right here on this document is really important. It says that the student handout contains step-by-step -step directions for each gizmo. It's not just a worksheet for answers. It's actually all of the instructions to um, complete the gizmo and do the simulation. So it's really important that you start at the top of the handout, follow each direction and answer the questions as you go. And it should make, um, it should make doing the gizmo a lot clearer. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the student um, handout for the mystery powders analysis. And that's gonna pop up in a, sep a, se a separate window. I'm going to pull that window uh, or pull that tab to make it its own window. And then I'm going to um, make the window small so that I can see it down here in the lower right hand corner, but um, it's not taking up my whole screen. And then I'm gonna go back up to the top and I'm gonna click on the um, explorelearning.com website and I'm gonna go to the, the website, which is what this looks like. Um, we're gonna go over here to where it says login. Now, since I've already been in, I'm just going to sign in with a username and password. But if this is the first time that you're logging in, you're just gonna enter your class code here at the bottom and then click on the enroll in class. And then it will um, prompt you to create a username and password. So I'm just going to enter my username and password and then what it pops up is the class that I'm registered in my teacher's name and then those two gizmos um, that I'm being asked to complete so in order to complete them you click on launch so I'm going to first make this window smaller 
so that I can see both my handout and my gizmo window. Whoops. Both my handout and my gizmo window. Um, so that I can sort of go back and forth between, between the two of them. And I don't really need to print out the student handout that way. So in order to do the, um, the gizmo, you click launch right here by this rocket and it will open up the simulation. Um, if you were to scroll down below the window that has the simulation in it, there are some assessment questions. Um, I know some people have already completed these. These are not part of your assignment. You do not have to do these. Um, you can if you want to, but it's not part of the assignment. So what we're asking you to use these simulations for is trying to understand things and work through the questions. Uh, it's not important, again, to do those assessment questions. So the handout becomes very important because it is um, it has all of your questions and um, you know the instructions for what you what we're asking you to do. I'm gonna size these up a little bit more and I can see the whole simulation on that side and then I just want to see a little bit more of my handout over here. Okay. So if you like I said at the beginning, if you start at the top of the assignment, and just go line by line and answer the questions and follow the directions, everything should um, you know, be pretty clear about what you need to do. So the top of this says that um, this is explore, a student exploration mystery powder analysis, gives you some vocabulary that you're going to find in this, um, biorette solution, iodine solution, litmus paper, and vinegar. All things that will be explained, but just a heads up, those are um, indicators uh, um, that are similar to some indicators that we've used um, in class that are going to be used in this simulation. So the, the next direction says prior knowledge questions. Do these before using the gizmo. Uh, it says a white powder is found spilled on the kitchen floor of a crime scene. A similar powder is found on the shoes of a suspect in the crime. What are some powders that you might find on the kitchen floor? So you would just jot down some things, maybe salt, sugar, cornstarch, I don't know, flour, things that, you know, a lot of things in the kitchen might be used for baking. So those might be some white powders that could have spilled on the floor. And then for number two, the question just says, how could you tell if the powder was salt, sugar, flour, or baking soda? So this is just asking you for your ideas about things. Um, and you don't need the gizmo to do the prior knowledge questions. And all the gizmos on this website start out this way with prior knowledge questions. So after you do the introduction, you're going to go down to the next part. The next part is always a warm up. It's designed to get you used to using the um, get you used to using the gizmo. Um, so it's kind of like the practice section. So this one says, um, the mystery powder analysis gizmo allows you to use a variety of tests to identify unknown substances. Um, to start, drag the baking soda test tube into the place tube here area. So now I'm gonna go over here on to the left side and find the baking soda sample. I'm gonna click on it and then drag it over to the place where it says place tube here. And then I'm gonna drop it in. Number one says, under appearance, click test. Is the baking soda a fine powder, no visible grains, or is it coarse, visible grains? So I'm gonna go over here where it says appearance, and I'm gonna click test. And then there's gonna be a little simulation. It's gonna drop the baking soda onto the tray, and I don't see any visible grains. So on my piece of paper, I'm jotting down that this is a fine powder. So now number two, oops, number two says litmus paper is an indicator of acids and bases. Under litmus test, click test, which of the following results occurred? And you're gonna circle your answer or jot it down. So I look over here and I find litmus test here, click test over here on the left, 
It will drop some baking soda in the test tube, and then we're gonna use a red strip of litmus paper that turned blue, and a blue strip of litmus paper that also turned blue. So I have two blue strips. If I go back over here, I see that both strips turning blue means that baking soda is a base. So turning blue on both of them uh, represents it's a, that it's a base, it has that property. Number three, so I would just record that, sorry. I would just record that on my piece of paper. So number three says some substances react with vinegar to produce carbon dioxide, visible as bubbles. So it says to go under the vinegar test, click test, and then does the vinegar bubble. So I see the vinegar test here. I'm gonna click test. It's gonna drop some baking soda in there and then some vinegar, and then we can see that it's bubbling. So I would write down, yes, it does. And I'll jot that on my paper right now. Um, for number four, it says the blue biorette solution turns bright purple in the presence of proteins. And then iodine solution turns dark purple in the presence of starch. So it wants you to try each of these tests. So does the baking soda contain protein? Okay, so we're gonna click on, biorette is the test for protein. So we're gonna click test. It's gonna drop some baking soda and then biorette and it's not purple. So there is no protein in baking soda. And then it says, does baking soda contain starch? So iodine is the test for starch and we know that from our bath bomb unit. Um, also from the McKenna unit, and we are going to click um, test. We're going to drop some baking soda into the test tube and then some um, iodine, but it did not turn dark purple, so the answer to does baking soda contain starch is also no. So that's the last question for the gizmo warm-up section. So it's it's basically taking you through each of the tests that you're going to perform as you work through the other activities in the um, on the sheet. So as we move through or move to the next page, it says activity A, known substances, get the gizmo ready. It says click reset. So we're going to go over here and find reset and click it. And then um, it says, be sure the known substances are selected and known substances are selected. So the question here says, what are the properties of baking powder, baking soda, cornstarch, gelatin, and salt? And they have a data table for you to um, record all of your answers. And just like in the warm up, when you use baking soda and went through each of these tests, you're gonna, just gonna go through and for each substance, do each of the tests and record your answers. And this is similar to something that we've done in class. So it should, I mean, not on the computer, but in general should seem um, somewhat um, similar. I think bath bombs is when we did that before. So. After you complete your table, then you would scroll down and you would find um, some questions to um, answer about what your findings were um, in, the, in the table above. A um, couple of other questions for you to answer. And then there's this challenge. You know, the challenge questions can be that, they can be challenging. So you should just try them. And if they seem too difficult, well, move on to the next part. For activity B, again, we're just gonna start at the top and we're gonna read every line and every direction and just keep working down and it's pretty um, self-explanatory that way. So activity B is about unknown substances. Um, it says to get the gizmo ready, you're gonna click reset. So we're gonna go back over here and click reset. And then it says under select a sample, choose unknown. So we're gonna choose unknown. And then it says, check that the standard mystery set is displayed. And that's what we have. Standard mystery set is over here is displayed. 
So it looks like we have 15 test tubes here. So this first question says, how can you identify unknown substances? And it says, identify test tubes one through five are all containing uh, single substances. So run the five tests on these powders and identify the substance in each tube. So you're gonna pull number one over, you're gonna run each test, record the test, and then based on your results up here in activity A, you should be able to identify each of the powders, the mystery powders. Um, for the question number two, it says um, test tubes six through 10 all contain mixtures of two substances. So you're gonna run the five tests on the powders and you're gonna try to identify the two substances in each tube, again, based on that data that you collected in activity A. After that, you have a question to answer. And then um, number four is a challenge. Um, the test tubes that have, um, or the test tubes that are numbered 11 through 15 all contain three substances in them. You're gonna run the tests and see if you can't identify um, the three substances in each tube. And for some of them, it says that there are, there's more than one possible answer. So this one is a little tricky and it will extend your, your thinking a little bit, but it might be fun to try. And at the end down here, there are some questions and then it gives you an example of how you can do something on your own and create your own new sample and do some tests with that. So that takes us to the end of the, of the worksheet or the, the handout, but it's not the end of the assignment. So in my situation, I've got all my answers written down on a piece of paper since I was just following along on the student handout. I don't need the handout anymore, so I'm gonna get rid of that. And I'm gonna open this screen back up here. And now that I've finished the gizmo, I'm gonna go back and look on this document that I used um, that has the directions for the gizmos. And the last um, item on the paper says, after you have finished a gizmo and the questions on the student handout, complete the Google response form. So if I click here, I would be able to get to that Google response form. Also, the Google response form is on the schedule of activities. So right here is where we, cl we clicked to get to the directions for the gizmo. Underneath it, I can click and it will bring up an exit ticket, a, a form for you to fill out to give me some information or give Mrs. Zubak some information or Mr. Julian um, about how it went when you did this activity. So you're gonna put in your school email address, you're gonna put your name, you're gonna select your teacher, you are gonna select your hour, um, you're gonna select what resource you did today. So you did the, we did the mystery powders gizmo. You are going to write down one important thing that you learned when completing the gizmo. Um, did you find anything that was challenging or difficult? let me know so that we can um, adjust for the future. And then what did you like or dislike about the gizmo? That would be great. Um, again, so we can adjust for the future. And then um, share some of your experiences. Um, you can take a picture or make a video or a document and upload it here. So maybe you wanna take a picture of the, the sheet of paper that you wrote down all of your answers on and um, add that file there before you submit your responses. If you don't have anything to put into this last part, it's not a required um, piece, so you could submit it without it. And then once you submit this, this form, then you are finished with the activity. Um, I hope that this has been helpful. And um, as always, if you have any questions about how to complete any of the science activities, you should send an email to your teacher. Thanks.